So Agua Pan started about, uh, about five years ago. It is uh, an association of uh, custodian farmers. So it's, it's farmers who maintain uh, particularly large collections of, uh, of potato land traces. So each family has about 50 to up to over 500 land traces per, per household. Uh, we organized the association in such a way that it's now farmer-led. So they have their own uh, board uh, and it consists of farmers who make decisions. Uh, the decisions that they make is around uh, how to use funds for benefit sharing and it's a monetary scheme. Uh, so they, they receive funds from, uh, from Dutch, in this case from Dutch potato companies. But it could as well also be Peruvian potato companies or any other company uh, that wants to support benefit sharing. Uh, in the case of the Dutch potato companies, the link is quite direct because they work uh, with potato genetic resources for breeding, uh, the, the resources that they already have from the, from the gene banks, and they want to comply with the international treaty uh, to do benefit sharing and support farmers' rights, uh, but they often don't have options to do that very directly. So Aguapan offers a way for them to invest, to link directly to, to a group of farmers who maintain a huge diversity. Uh, and of course for the farmers, uh, the main objective of Aguapan is that they can uh, self-represent themselves and they themselves see how they perceive benefit sharing and, and what that means for them uh, in, a, in a very direct way. Es que más antes no teníamos papas así cantidad, sino poca. Sí teníamos, pero desde muy antes, pero era poca la cantidad. Ahora estamos incrementando las papas nativas, recolectando de otras comunidades, de otros pueblos, para aumentar y por el premio que nos ha abastecido, ¿no? por el incentivo que nos da prácticamente en ferias, en las mixturas, en ferias distritales, provinciales participamos y así ya hemos incrementado el número de las papas. Eh, nuestros padres, nuestros abuelos también han conservado, pero cada, en cada pueblo era diferente. Eh, por decir, mi papá habría conservado pues, unos 30, 40, 50 variedades nomás, no como ahora que tengo 300 variedades. Uh, so that was an interesting process, it was an open, an open call. Uh, so we took in the beginning about three months uh, and we did two parallel processes. One, one was to have uh, an announcement for regional governments uh, to the Ministry of Agriculture and through NGOs. And we kind of had uh, terms of reference for what kind of households we were looking for. So those households that maintain uh, large collections of land races for at least 10 to 15 years or longer. Uh, that had some kind of uh, economic need or a situation that particularly would benefit from uh, monetary uh, support. Uh, and also uh, we requested uh, that they needed to be from different families, so couldn't be from the same family and not from the same community. Uh, and we also asked for a letter from the, from the local village authorities to kind of support uh, the household. Uh, that was one process and then we visited each of the households. Uh, we hired an anthropologist for three months and she went to visit communities and also uh, to verify that actually the farmers had these uh, local recognition and that they had these land races. Uh, through that we ended up with 50 families from 50 different communities from five different regions who had basically never met each other before. So that was uh, very interesting at the, at the very first meeting because all the members were basically new and didn't, didn't know each other from, uh, from any previous uh, experience. Bueno, la primera vez que nos hemos reunido, después que nos han llamado a todos, no nos hablábamos, no nos conocíamos, nos teníamos miedo, ¿no? Pero ahora, ya que estamos en el quinto encuentro, estamos como hermanos ya, ya tenemos esa confianza ya, ya sabemos de dónde venimos y quiénes somos.